All right, everybody, I am back with a brand new DC update. Now, I am on the road to 20,000 subs, and I can only get there with your help. So when this video is over, if you're new, please take the time to like the video and maybe subscribe if you like the content. And for anybody who's been here for a long time but you haven't subbed yet, what are you waiting for? Like the video, sub, and hit that notification bell so you will be notified when new videos go up. Now, today we're going to talk about a few things that are very interesting. Uh, we're going to, uh, you know, my last, I did two videos yesterday, and for anybody who might have missed it, I did a video late yesterday in regards to this dynamic duo movie that Warner Brothers is going to be putting out. And we're going to take a look at what that may actually look like here today, and I'm going to give you my overall feelings about this, and my overall feelings about the DCU in general when we get to the end of the video, and I think I'm going to be able to prove my point pretty well, and I think a lot of people are going to appreciate what I have to say about everything. So, Let's take a look at the few photos I have grabbed since yesterday. First up, uh, this is from Variety. It says, Episode 2 of The Penguin hit 1.6 million viewers across HBO and Max on Sunday. Per Warner Brothers Discovery, that marks a 17% increase from the series premiere, which debuted on September 19th. Now, here's why I think there would be a 17% increase. Because you're not going to get people to watch a second episode who haven't watched the first. So what I'm guessing is that a lot of people waited for the second episode to come out before they decided to even watch the first episode. So I'm betting that right before this episode came out that there was probably a bump in the first uh, the first episode as well because it's very rare that you would get an increase like that if you haven't seen the first one. And I find it funny that all of a sudden Warner Brothers Discovery is able to come out with numbers but they haven't been able to do it with anything since, uh, which is very weird. Uh, nothing in regards to DC. They keep that. They have kept that stuff hidden from, from the uh, you know the general public, which is a shame. This was a big rumor going around yesterday, and we don't know if this is true or not. But it says Warner Brothers Discovery is reportedly eyeing Robert Pattinson to take on the role of Batman within its official DC Extended Universe, despite his current portrayal in Matt Reeves' standalone films, meant to be a distinctive universe. And this is coming from Wealth, and I'm not sure what Wealth is, but uh, there's a lot of talk about this. Now, we know the dynamic duo movie that's coming out has absolutely nothing to do with the Robert Pattinson Batman universe. They made that very clear. So the dynamic duo is either going to be its own thing, or the Batman is going to remain its own thing, or they're bringing this into the DCU, and the dynamic duo is its own thing. We don't know what they're doing. And again, James Gunn is not being clear on anything that is actually going on within the DC universe. And I find it really strange that they announced this dynamic duo movie yesterday, and they haven't even done anything else in regards to Slate 1. They're barely getting into the Green Lantern stuff. But we're not, we haven't heard anything about Swamp Thing. We haven't heard anything about the Amazon show. We haven't heard a lot, of, we haven't heard anything on a lot of the other stuff. We haven't even heard anything about, you know, the whole, the whole Batman film that's going to be coming out in the DCU. There hasn't been anything released in regards to those properties, but they're announcing this weird animated movie, and we're going to talk more about that at the end of the video. All right, so there was a video that, was put out yesterday and I'm not actually going to show the video because I don't want any type of a strike on my channel but it says Swaybox Studios developed the tech Momo Animation which is a cross between CGI animation, stop motion and live action real time performance here's a general idea of what Dynamic Duo will look like and they were using the Iron Giant as an example the kid from the Iron Giant and you can see and I'm not going to show the video, like I said, because I don't want I don't want to get stricken in any way. This is this is can give you an idea of what they're going to do, and it's it looks more 3D, you know, oriented, but it doesn't look like a puppet. It definitely looks like it definitely looks like an animated movie, a computer animated movie, but it's going to have a more realistic look, but still cartoonish. It's it's a very strange thing to be doing, and again, I'm going to talk more about this film and my feelings behind it here at the end of uh, the video. Now, Home of DCU posted this yesterday, and it says, Superman marketing and or toys is starting to take shape, says Warner Brothers Discovery's uh, Philippe 
uh, Rakul, I don't know how you say his name. How do we tier the offering and ensure fans connect correctly to the characters they love, be it toys, fashion, home, food, health, and beauty, with partners such as Pepco, Lego, Spin Masters, or Form Formitalia? There's, that's just a few as we have thousands of partners that have already come on board for Superman across all categories. If you guys thought the marketing for the Batman, like I have never seen Warner Brothers ever, ever promote anything like they did the Batman. That The Batman was freaking everywhere. You're probably going to get that tenfold with Superman. Now, I did make a comment in this post that that's not even... That's not even Corn Sweat's Superman. I thought it. I thought it was Henry Cavill, but it's not. It's just a generic Lego Superman. It's not even the Corn Sweat Bat or Superman. So I'm not sure why they didn't already show the Corn Sweat's, you know, Superman because there is a picture of it out there already. They're already letting us know there is going to be all kinds of information uh, coming out, uh, toys, all kinds of stuff. We're going to get bombarded like we've never seen and. It doesn't mean the movie is going to be successful because even though they spent all that money to promote the Batman, it still didn't, it still didn't even break, you know, eight hundred million dollars. And so, this is going to be an uphill battle for Superman because Superman doesn't make as much money as Batman does, and a lot of people are still, you know, expecting Henry Cavill to come back. It is a fact. I've talked to several people that are not really into movies and. They're shocked to find out that they're bringing in somebody new to play Superman. They give you this weird look like, what the crap? Uh, so people are not into these reboots anymore. They're just tired of these studios com- you know, constantly rebooting everything. And that is the biggest complaint I find when I talk to people about this that are regular schmoes. They're just tired of all the reboots. It's tiresome, and they're just done with it. All right, so this is a kind of a preview into what I'm going to be discussing here in a minute. But this person put... The future of DC looks amazing right now. So these are the things that are actually in production. Dynamic Duo, Superman, Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow, and the Batman Part 2. I would not call this amazing. First of all, they haven't shown us anything official outside of this picture from Superman. And the movie comes out here in about nine months. Uh, Ten months, nine months, whatever it is in about nine months, and they haven't shown us anything official outside of this picture, and that is the, we've talked about this, that is the worst reveal I've ever seen for something this big. Like, people, so many people thought that was CGI. It's a very bizarre photo, and even some of the set photos, the suit looks different from that. It was just a botched reveal. Why they would do that is beyond me. Now, they haven't shown us anything for the Batman Part 2 or Supergirl, but they already have a logo and this you know uh, behind dynamic duo which is weird it's just weird i would call this slate very odd because and this may be why james gunn is holding off on his batman film you know for the dcu is because the batman 2 has to come out so we may not see the dcu's batman until uh, long after the batman 2 hits theaters if it even gets made but for people to say this looks amazing i i don't think that's the case All right, guys, what I wanted to look at here is the actual slate for the DCU Chapter 1. And then I'm going to talk about the dynamic duo and my feelings behind that movie. But DCU Chapter 1, Gods and Monsters. Just remember that Superman Legacy is the first official film in the DCU. He also talked about The Authority. He talked about Batman, The Brave and the Bold, Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow, Swamp Thing, The Batman Part 2, which is going to be Elseworlds. Creature Commandos, which is going to be on HBO Max, along with Waller and Paradise Lost, Booster Gold, and Lanterns. So those are all things that are going to be on HBO Max, or Max, or whatever you want to call it. This slate is very bizarre, and then you add on the dynamic duo in there. There is nothing that seems cohesive about this in any way, shape, or form. It's like they're throwing mud at the wall. What this seems like to me is kind of what we had after Aquaman got released in the DCU, or the DCEU. Right after the DCEU, you know, hit Aquaman and they made all this money, everything after that turned into a comedy, and it was weird stuff like Birds of Prey, Shazam, a lot of weird stuff, right? And it just ultimately tanked because everything became a comedy and became like Marvel. Then they bring on a guy who directed for Marvel, 
And I still want to reiterate that he's never had a massive hit outside of what he did with Guardians of the Galaxy. And it's Marvel and Disney that backed him on that. That's not just his thing. And so he became successful off of riding that wave. There's nothing he's ever done that shows that he should be in charge of doing all of this. But yet the investors and Warner Brothers are behind him on this. And just remember that his Suicide Squad movie lost the studio tens, if not hundreds of millions of dollars. It was a, it was a big bomb. There, there's no question about it. That movie bombed. It just did. And people are going to come in the comments. I know there's people going to be there saying it came out during a pandemic. Yeah, but so did Godzilla and some other things that made bank at the, at the theater. So you cannot use that as an excuse. You just can't. It, it just was a bomb. It just lost a studio, a ton of money, but yet he's in charge. Then you have this dynamic duo movie coming out, which again, you add that to this slate, it's it's weird. Somebody made the comment, and I thought this was a brilliant comment. They said they passed up the Batman Beyond movie by the people who did Into the Spider-Verse for that? Make it make sense, guys. Make it make sense. These are all weird projects, odd projects. There doesn't seem to be anything cohesive with this. And so, yeah, people have a right to be worried. There's a reason why I have my channel. It's a reason why I talk about this stuff, and I'm going to continue to talk about it until I see something that makes me want to get excited for what they're doing, and I have not seen it yet. Everything about Superman looks cheap. It just does look cheap cheap and they haven't shown us any official video for it yet and so we don't even know what the look of the film is going to be there's so many unknowns and yet they continue to to add on weird stuff and now we know the marketing is going to be in high gear they're going to do everything they can because their whole the the whole movie division is going to bank on superman being a hit if it's not a hit it's going to be bad guys it's going to be real bad for warner brothers I think DC is going to be dead for quite some time. And I know I don't know about you guys, but I'm not getting any younger. And we were so close to having this amazing story fleshed out in front of us, and Warner Brothers pulled out the rug. So there are people that have a right to be upset and have a right to have a gripe with James Gunn being in charge of DC. And I'm one of those, and I'm not just going to change my mind because somebody told me to or says to have an open mind. There's nothing that shows me a path to where I should have an open mind about everything that's coming out. It's just weird stuff. It is just stuff that they're throwing at the wall. And as far as the dynamic duo movie goes, you know, someone said just be you should be happy you, that they're doing Dick Grayson and that they're doing Jason Todd. Why should I be happy when it's going to be an animated form for families? Which means it's for kids too, like Into the Spider-Verse. We should get excited for that? Really? Really? Because as far as I can tell, you know, I started reading comics right around the time that Jason Todd was killed in the comic books. You know, the whole death in the family was actually when I started collecting comics back in 1988. And I've been reading ever since. And it's that story is not a joke. It's not a funny story. It should be taken seriously. It shouldn't be lighthearted. It should be Definitely something more serious, and instead they decide to give us an animated feature. Make it make sense. None of this makes any sense. It just doesn't. Now, on a lighter note, today the the All In initiative at DC started. They're rebranding all their comics All In, and there's going to be kind of an there's going to be a whole separate universe called the Absolute Universe. Uh, it's a story with Dark Side, and it's a flip comic today where one side is being told from Superman's point of view. The other side is being told from Darkseid's point of view. I'm actually excited to read this. You know, I haven't been excited to read DC in over a decade now, and this is the first time where I feel like there might be some kind of hope in with the comics. And the early reviews for Absolute Batman, which come out next week, are stellar. Like, it it looks like Scott Snyder hit it out of the park. So I will be doing a review on on that as soon as I have a chance. I'm going to read it hopefully later today or tomorrow, and I will be back with a review on that. I'm also seeing The Joker 2 tomorrow, and I will be back with my review on that. So I do appreciate all of your support. 
You guys are all awesome. I couldn't have made it to 13,000 subs on my channel without you guys. You guys have no idea how much I appreciate every single one of the views I get, every single one of the comments you guys make, good or bad. I do appreciate the interactions. We will see you on the next video.